Hello friends, I'm Ms. Dwyer and I'm a science coordinator for elementary schools in Winchester. So, as you know, if you know me, this is my favorite classroom. I'm actually at the edge of a field outside in my hometown. And there's a lot of great things happening here and a lot of fun things that I'm excited to explore. But this, in this video, I wanted to talk just a little bit about how you can explore safely outside. Now, when we go outside to explore, there's really only two things that I ever think about that I want to protect myself from. The first one is poison ivy, and the second one are ticks and other biting insects. So what I've found in my years of exploring is that both of those things are really easy to avoid and so that we can stay safe if you just do a few simple things. First simple thing that we can do is how we dress. So I'm going to start from the bottom up. I wear rubber boots. I wear rubber boots a lot. These are some of my favorite ones. These ones have dogs with sweaters on. I wear rubber boots because they help protect me not just from things like rain and puddles and mud and even poison ivy, but the main reason I wear them is because they keep crawling insects from getting onto my body to begin with. So things like ticks don't fly. In fact, mainly all they do is they stay on plants like this until we walk through the plants or brush by them. At that point, they will move from the plant onto us. Now usually that starts with our feet because that's where we're spending a lot of time tromping around, whether it's in the woods, off the trail, or in a field like this. Anything that doesn't have cut short grass that I plan to walk through, I wear my rubber boots for. Now the great thing about these is they especially help me keep ticks off me. Ticks crawl and they don't crawl well on rubber boots. They just can't get any kind of grip on there. So they tend to just stay on the plant instead of coming onto me. Finally, if I'm in an area that I know has lots of ticks, which in certain season my town does, in the early spring and in the fall, I even just tuck in everything. So I tuck my, my pants into my socks, my feet into my boots, my shirt into my pants or my leggings, and that way that I know that nothing can crawl in there. Final tip is this. When I get home from an outdoor adventure, I just brush myself off all the way from the top down to the bottom. That just ensures that all I'm bringing into my home is me <laughs> and anything that I happen to have collected, including my pictures and not carrying any friends along with me back into my home. I do carry some bug spray with me just in case the mosquitoes get really bad, but I try not to put it on because I don't like to have a lot of chemicals on my skin. And I also don't like to have a lot of chemicals out in the places that I like to explore. The one thing about bug spray is if I'm going to put it on, I don't actually put it on when I'm already out exploring if I can help it. Or if for some reason the mosquitoes get really bad and I need to, I try to go to a really open area so that the only thing that I'm spraying with bug spray is myself. Bug spray is toxic to insects. That's the whole point. So we don't want to spread it around any further than we have to because we want to keep our insect populations healthy. Poison ivy can look different depending on how old it is. So this is more mature, older poison ivy. Because it's late summer, early fall, I can see in the center of my photo frame that there are some what look like berries on it. That's very common. You don't want to touch those either. All of them tend to have shiny leaves and three leaves in a cluster. But sometimes the younger ones look a little different. So just below these older ones are some examples of younger poison ivy. Now they still have those three leaves and they're green, but they're not quite as shiny as the older poison ivy. And these ones are very short which is showing me that they're probably younger. That's because where I am right now, I'm at the edge of a playing field. 
in my town. And this is a very common environment for poison ivy to grow in. So look for those three leaves, mainly shiny, green, and maybe turning orange or reddish in late summer, early fall, just like those. So where I live, poison ivy also does a lot of climbing. It can climb up trees as a vine and also climbs over stone walls. So there's a pretty big patch right behind me that I'd like to take a closer look at. Pretty good example of late summer and fall poison ivy. If you can see, the leaves are shiny green, but also starting to turn a little reddish brown. There are those three leaves. Let me see if I can find a really good example. There we go. Three leaves in a cluster together. That's one of the best ways to tell poison ivy from other plants that can look similar. Also, if you look carefully, you can see these um, little berry-like structures that are growing around the gray or tan stem. So we don't want to touch any part of this plant. We don't want to touch the leaves, um, the berry-like structures, or the stems, none of it. Um, and we don't really want to touch it at any time of year. So here's a good example of what poison ivy looks like when it's growing as a vine. Now if you look at each cluster of leaves, you can see three right next to each other. There's another three, three, always in groups of three. And these ones are still pretty green. They're not particularly shiny. Mostly when they're growing out in the sun, they are. So I'm gonna step back so you can see that those three leaves are moving on that thin little vine all the way up this tree. And the green things that you see up to there, all poison ivy. So we want to be aware of that when we're walking around in the woods and also when we're walking near things like stone walls. And you can see the vine in the background. It's kind of that reddish brownish color. So just take a good look and before you put your hand on something, make sure it doesn't have a vine with three leaves on it, on each part of it, just like that. Here's a good comparison of poison ivy, three leaves in each little bunch, growing on a little vine on a tree, and there's more of it, and something that's a vine that's not poison ivy. So look at that. Do you notice the difference? This plant is called Virginia creeper sometimes. It looks a lot like poison ivy, but how many leaves are there in a cluster? More than three. There's usually five leaves in a cluster. So this is, this is not poison ivy. This is not dangerous. But then, just over here on the tree, uh-oh, look at that. Three leaves again. So these, so this is poison ivy. So these plants are growing side by side. One of them we don't want to touch and the other one is perfectly safe. So let's just look at one more plant that can be confused with poison ivy. So the one right in front of me, there's two plants. One of them is poison ivy behind that stick. But this one's not. This one is actually some kind of brambleberry, like a raspberry or blackberry, something like that. So how can you tell the difference? Because this one also has three leaves in a cluster. You see them. Three leaves, three leaves, three leaves. And the poison ivy, here's some right over here, has three leaves in a cluster too. They look really similar, tell you the truth. But poison ivy is again, we don't want to touch it. it. Irritates our skin. Whereas raspberry, blackberry and such, not so much. So how can you tell the difference? Well, if you look on the edge of the leaf, and I'm going to touch this one because I know this one is not poison ivy. Do you see how there's all these really fine spikes on the edge? I'm only touching this because I know for a fact that this is not poison ivy. All those real pointy spiky edges kind of match the pointy spiky bits that are on the stem. Do you see them down there? So that's why we call these brambles, because they get caught on our socks and on our clothing and on our skin if we're not careful. And they can, they can um, you know, scratch you, but they're not poisonous to touch. So if I look at that leaf 
and then compare it to this leaf, and I'm not going to touch this one because this, this is poison ivy. Do you see how it's smoother on the edge? Now some of them may have dents, like that, the one that's uh, right there. It has like one, two, those two points sticking out, but that's only really two points. Whereas the bramble has lots of points, more than I can comfortably count. So that's a good way to tell the difference between something like raspberry and poison ivy. Raspberry or blackberry has very pointy, sharp edges like the edge of a knife. Poison ivy has smoother edges with maybe a couple of points sticking out. So poison ivy, just like most things in nature, really won't bother us unless we bother it. So you can be near it. I'm standing, I'm sitting right in front of a big patch of poison ivy right now. The only thing you don't want to do is you don't want to touch it. So I'm not going to touch it with my hands or any part um, of my body. I'm not going to walk on it and I'm not going to feel it. I'm just going to leave it be and that way I know that I'm safe and it's safe. Now that you know a little bit more about how to stay safe, I hope that you'll go out and explore a little bit on your own or with a family member. I've put a link to a scavenger hunt or a nature bingo game right in the slideshow to help guide you. But also, it can be fun to just go out and explore it and <clears throat> find things that are interesting to you. I'll show you some ways to find interesting things in upcoming lessons. I hope you'll join me, and I'll see you later.